Yo, what up guys? It's Jay here and welcome back to TV Time with Jay. This time we are here to review Lovecraft Country Season 1, Episode 3, Holy Ghost. So, we are on Episode 3 and once again, this show just continues to blow my mind. Just, wow. So, you know, before I get started, of course, as per usual with my episode reviews, I will be recapping the events of the episode and then going over my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout. So if you haven't seen this episode yet, do yourself a favor, watch the episode first, then come back here and tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below because I will be going into spoiler territory. You have been warned. Okay. Wow, this episode was insane. I know I said that for my review of last week's episode, but I feel like this is just going to be what I'm saying every single week with this show, because, oh my god, dude. So, uh, this episode, you know, follows up several weeks after the events at uh, Artem, and, you know, everybody's back home, and, you know, Tick has been staying with Hippolyta and Dee, you know, looking after them after, of course, the death of Uncle George. Uh, basically, uh, Montrose and Tick kind of, uh, you know, spun the story of, of course, Uncle George being shot by the racist sheriff that, that was chasing after them in the Sundown episode. Um, and, uh, you know, they showed her the body, they showed her the bullet wound. Of course, you know, we all know that he was shot by an evil white wizard. But they can't exactly say that now, can they? Right? Like, <laughs> how exactly would they go about telling Hippolyta that? Like, oh yeah, so your husband was actually murdered by um, a rich, high society, occultist white man. Uh, who was trying to use Tick as a like conduit for a magic ritual to open up a door to the Garden of Eden so that he could have uh, eternal life. Yeah, that's not exactly something that you could just drop at a casual dinner conversation. So, of course, you know, they spun a more believable story. And uh, so Tick, of course, is feeling really guilty about it uh he knows that like it's wrong to not be telling the truth to hippolyta and hippolyta is definitely suspicious of tick and so he's like you know what? i can't really stay here pops can i stay here with you a couple nights and then eventually you know he you know is goes looking for letty and letty somehow manages to buy this huge mansion on the north side of town which obviously you know is primarily populated by white folks and so this is you know a huge move for letty uh you know she uh, the house is so big uh that you know in order to kind of afford this contract she has to rent out rooms and also renting out rooms to people will help the community out and really make a big impact you know on the city and especially on the city's you know black population and so she opens the doors to all of her artist friends because you know uh working as an artist doesn't pay nearly as well um as compared to like a stable nine to five and of course you know in those times especially you know working as a black artist would pay next to nothing i mean just consider this in modern times right like you know um a job like being a YouTuber, for example, that's freelance work. You know, it's not necessarily a stable job. So you're out here, you know, really just living paycheck to paycheck. But imagine back in those times, right? Like, this is definitely something that is really needed. And, uh, you know, Letty is really excited to, you know, make this move. And, you know, she shares it with her sister. And, like, they're actually bonding and getting along really well. Um, and then you know stuff starts to happen and this turns into like a haunting movie basically uh you know weird stuff starts happening around the house she starts hearing voices all kinds of crazy shit is happening and then you know the night of the housewarming party they got a bunch of people from their neighborhood you know at the house 
drinking, having fun, having a great time. And then, of course, as you would expect, the white folks come to ruin it. And, you know, eventually, you know, they go as far as to put a burning cross on their front lawn. And, of course, Letty is Letitia fucking Lewis. She ain't going to take that lying down. So, she, a couple of her friends, Tick, and some of his boys squat up, grab bats, grab guns, and they start fucking shit up. They start fucking up those white boys' cars. They start, like, you know, just, you know, causing the scene. And, of course, naturally, the police show up and, you know, detain Letty. And they start, uh, the captain starts asking questions about the house and what she knows about the Winthrop house. And he mentions that, like, they found the bodies of eight black people in the basement. Of course, he didn't say black people. He said a word that I refuse to even entertain. But I know you guys can pretty much fill in the blank there. But yeah, so now Letty is like, Oh yeah, my house is fucking haunted. Because, I mean, after the shit she's been through, ghosts are probably the tamest thing after all that crazy experience. So she starts researching, and she discovers, like, a bunch of connections with the cop, and this one guy, and all these experiments and stuff. Like, And she, you know, hires this Creole voodoo practitioner lady to basically you know, cleanse the house, perform an exorcism as it were. And, you know, as they're doing this, of course, this is when uh, three of the white boys from the north side try to break into the house and cause commotion and basically scare them off or, you know, do even worse to the inhabitants of the house. Um, and, of course, the spirits, they sense this. Um, they sense their own people being attacked by these white folks. And so they take care of them. And let me tell you, that was some of the most cathartic, satisfying moments of the entire episode. Just seeing those ghosts tear through those arrogant fucks. Oh man, that was satisfying. And then, you know, shit gets really intense. Uh, we see the ghost of the former owner of the house, the uh, doctor. Uh, he possesses the medium, you know, the voodoo priestess, and, like, he starts, like, choking out Letty, uh, you know, and uh, threatening her, like, yelling at her to get out of his fucking house, and, you know, of course, she's fighting back, and then she starts to call upon uh, the spirits of the missing people who were used as these, like, illegal experiment subjects, and she's like, you know, you're not dead yet. You can still fight. You can still fight. Help me. Help me cast him out. You don't want him here as much as I do. Help me finish this. And so all these ghosts work together to finally get their vengeance and, you know, make their peace so that they can finally cross over because now their business is done. And that was some of the most intense, amazing things uh, that I've ever seen. This was a really interesting swerve on, like, the haunted house, haunting movie trope uh, that they, like, played with in this episode. I really enjoyed it. And, man, some of the visuals and scares they did will haunt me as I sleep. And I'm recording this at 3 a.m., which is kind of like... Ooh, this you know, because if you know about spirits and ghosts, 3 a.m. is kind of like uh, you know the hour that they are about. So if y'all see anything in my camera, don't say shit. Uh, but yeah, so this was pretty crazy. Some of the best just horror I have ever seen just continues to be displayed all throughout this show. And of course, it follows the standard formula of establishing a norm, that norm being disturbed, but also still naturally fitting it into the story and the drama that they've already established. 
Um, of course, Letty also has her drama with her sister when she find when the sister finds out that how Letty was able to pay for this house was from an inheritance she got from her mom, which didn't really make any sense because her mom didn't really have any money. So Tick figures out that Christina, uh, you know, the chick who was the daughter of the, you know, head occultist in Artem, she was the one who, like, gave her the money and, like, disguised it as an inheritance from her mother uh, just so that she could move into the house of one of the former sons of Adam so that she could kind of lure Tick into assisting her in finding his hidden pages so that they could work together to decipher the language of Adam and, you know, learn to cast their own magic, to cast powerful magic, and so that she could take control and, you know, she could, you know, switch the dynamic up. Obviously, I don't trust Christina. Um, she has some ulterior motives, and, you know, she clearly already has some powerful magic on her side, too. She was able to, like, freeze Tick in place so that Tick wouldn't shoot her. I, although I don't think Tick would have shot her in the first place. Uh, but, yeah, shit's getting crazy, man. This plot is just thickening and thickening, and I'm absolutely in love with it. Uh, once again, a phenomenal episode. Uh, tell me your thoughts and feels in the comments down below. Oh, shit, it just got colder in my room. I'm not feeling good about this. <laughs> but, yeah, let me know your thoughts and feels in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. Um, in the outro card, I will leave linked my review of last week's episode of Lovecraft Country, episode 2, Whitey's on the Moon. So definitely check that out. I would really appreciate it. And um, I will also leave linked uh, my uh, latest upload as well, which I believe is my Winona Earp mid-season finale review. So definitely check that out. Uh, but until next time, this has been Jay from TV Time with Jay, and I'll catch you in the next review. Peace.